Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris, coming to you from New Zealand, wrapping up a series of conferences we've been giving here all week. The upcoming Synod on the Family in Rome next month is causing quite the stir as the final days wind down to its beginning. Charges of a heresy, dissent, and so forth are being flung around everywhere, many of them extremely warranted. Powerful cardinals are warning of possible schism with the bishops of Germany. The same could be said here in New Zealand, as bishops here have publicly and privately sided with the point of view of the German bishops. What's at stake in this huge storm gathering is nothing less than the church's understanding of our Eucharistic Lord. This is not some legalistic debate about marriage or divorce or annulments or irregular unions or merely com being compassionate or any other topics being talked about. No, it's nothing less than a debate over the most important aspect of Catholic life, the real presence of our blessed Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity, really, truly, and substantially present under the appearance of bread and wine. No one following this, praying intently about it, arguing about it, should understand this in any other way. All those other topics are just backdoor ways into the central discussion, which is nothing less than what do we as a church believe about the Blessed Sacrament. In a somewhat slang way of talking about it, this one, this synod, is for all the marbles. Here is the line of reasoning. Those clerics who don't really believe in the real presence, although they won't admit that openly, are more concerned about things of lesser import, like the sacrament of marriage. And marriage is a lesser sacrament than the Eucharist, rightly called the blessed sacrament. All the other sacraments flow from this one and ultimately return to this one, since this one is not just a sacrament, but the divine author of all the other six. This sacrament is Jesus Christ, and therefore it has precedence, pride of place and majesty over all the rest. And the true evil here, the perverted evil, is that many clerics are using the lower sacraments, if we can use that term, to attack the highest sacrament. So they try and twist the lower sacrament of matrimony into something other than what it is. They speak of it in terms the world uses to describe relationships. They call it a union. When it becomes adulterous, they call it an irregular union. They mask over the evil of perverting the sacrament by giving it another name. They change the vocabulary. Then they extend this perversion to other unions, other irregular unions, such as homosexual unions. Then they try to equate the two types of relationships, the sacrament of marriage and the non-sacramental irregular union. They put them on equal footing because they use people's feelings as the barometer, the yardstick by which they should be judged, totally discounting and eliminating the reality of sacramental grace. This whole approach, however revolting and uncatholic, is at least to be expected. Many of these prelates, for decades now since their ordinations, have approached the entire understanding of the church in their minds like this, as a body made up of solely people, for the people, by the people. God is practically speaking an afterthought. The whole heretical approach to social justice originates from this point of view. The whole destruction of Catholic education has this as its grounding. Why should anyone be surprised that the sacraments would now be approached at from this same angle, even the blessed sacrament? Not only is this perverse from the level of sacramental theology, it is also just plain unjust to another group of Catholics the forgotten Catholics, the ones who have lived their lives in accord with church teaching following a painful divorce, or those who have carried the cross of same-sex attraction with the desire to not offend their Heavenly Father and to follow church teaching. These forgotten and almost anonymous Catholics, they need to be supported in their choices to live according to the church. They need to hear the words of encouragement, empowerment, support from their shepherds. Today, it's as if our blessed Lord's parable has been turned on its head. The shepherds have gone after the 99 sheep who couldn't care less and left the one sheep to be devoured. This is a false love. It is, in fact, no love at all. Many of the prelates want the church to be obscured and overrun owing to their own personal states of life. 
They want evil to be called good and good to be called evil. And this is their moment, their, their hour, and they will do everything they can to bring this about. They have supported every scheme, plan, philosophy they could for the past 20, 30, even 40 years to take the emphasis off our Eucharistic Lord from disallowing holy hours, 40 hours devotions, Latin masses, Eucharistic processions, the removal of the tabernacle from the sanctuary, and on and on. Moreover, they have fostered anything and everything they could to promote their line of thinking. Nutty, irreverent masses, horrible education, Holy Communion in the hands, scads of so-called Eucharistic ministers, anything and everything that came along to de-emphasize the reality of the real presence and the reverence deserved. This is the high watermark for them, an actual official call to have sacrilege enshrined in the Mass in the form of officially recognized reception by those in mortal sin. The stakes are nothing less than this. Pray like you have never prayed before. Remain faithful. Stay strong in the faith. Reporting from Auckland, New Zealand, this is Michael Voris for churchmilitant.com. God love you.